We're going back to Comic-Con. The idea, obviously, is to kick last year's butt. We have to make sure that this will actually work or we're back to the drawing board. Now we're through the design phase. We know what we're gonna build. The next step is to prove that it's possible. That's where prototyping comes in. So pretty much today what I need to do is prove that this concept can work, that we can have multiple people. This will have one person down below, probably three people up here. So that's the concept, is that this is gonna be the largest autonomous free walking character that we've ever done. This is all human powered. So getting something this big to move around is, you've, you've got to test it. You know, okay, will that arm actually move? Can we actually make an arm that's eight feet long move by one guy? It's huge, it's massive. I mean, I don't know if the cameras caught it, but my favorite moment in that little meeting we just had was when Alan looked at the printout of his creation and then looked over at the amp suit and was like. <laughs> when I saw that arm printed out, I was like, oh, we're so screwed. I don't know how we're gonna do this. One way we like to refer to prototyping in the creature effects industry is a garbage bag test. This goes all the way back to Aliens and Stan Winston's studio, uh, and that's how they prove the alien queen would even be possible as a puppet. We'll apply the same principles to giant creature. We started out the build with the day one proof of concept of the base, which was to see if three people can get up there on a three-wheeled vehicle and have it be stable. It's huge, 14 feet tall. Is it safe? Is it center of gravity with that many people that much higher? Can it move? Can it drive around? And, you know, is it gonna fall over or not? And from there, we basically learned from that what, where our weak points were. And we started doing heavier steel work. It wasn't a doubt that we couldn't make it work with the three wheels. It's just how much steel and stuff we have to put in there to make it safe. Then we built the real thing. We built the real frame, the real base. And then while that was going on, I was also prototyping the arm. The other real challenge mechanically was creating this arm mechanism, which had to be prototyped in order for us to figure out how it would work and how it would perform. Last year, the big problem was getting the movement of the shoulder in line with the puppeteer's shoulder. If it was out of line, then that caused a lot of stress. I think with a bigger arm now, the problem is going to be worse. So we just want to get a nice shoulder move somehow that we can also bungee assist. The big challenge about these arms is that they're huge and we know they're going to weigh a ton. So that's where prototyping is essential. Okay. It's got a two to one, so it's actually harder to lift, but we're not worried about that because of the bungee assist. So we only have to move 45 degrees for the arm to go 90. So it'll be less work for the puppeteer as far as how far he needs to move his arm. figured out the geometry and now we've gone back in and we're starting the real build which includes bearings and making sure everything's strong enough and light enough that it's going to work to the best of its ability given our schedule. The prototyping helps a lot for us to visualize it but I try and approach anything of this scale with a kind of stupidly optimistic attitude that it's all just going to work but you know it always breaks when it's in front of an audience so that's the part we're trying to avoid. It's all doable if you have enough time and money. That's that's the biggest <laughs> the biggest glitch here is we've got a deadline. Unless we can get them to push back Comic Con in a couple weeks, that'd be cool. <laughs> Go to wired.com for the entire giant creature series.